there is a technique out there that makes watercolor a lot easier, but not a lot of people actually use it in their paintings. So in this video, I'm going to show you what this technique is, why it's so powerful, and how you can use it in your own paintings. Hi, I'm Françoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I wouldn't be surprised if the term negative painting sounds familiar to you. A lot of watercolor teachers use it to show how to paint leaves. But are you using it in your paintings and are you making the most of it? Because what we see in a lot of tutorials is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you don't know what negative painting is, it's when you make a light shape pop by outlining the edges with a darker color. And for some reason, it's not the most popular technique of the bunch. And yet for some paintings, you'll see that it's the way to go. For example, I noticed that when I find a reference photo that I love, but that comes off as hard to paint because it seems too busy. The negative painting technique often helps in that case. And it works with references where there are a lot of details that are fairly light against a darker or just a more colorful background. Forests are a great example because there can be so much going on. Florals could also be another example because that also can get pretty intimidating with all the detail. And there is a huge advantage that only negative painting has and I'm going to show it to you with today's painting. If you take this photo, you can see that the background is incredibly busy with trees. And we could decide to draw them all and then mask them with masking fluid or outline each one of them. But I think that takes too long. So what I do in this case is just draw the most basic sketch that I can think of. Here is just going to be the ground line and the main tree. Just so we know where the two key elements actually are located while we paint. And then instead of overthinking all the trees in the background, I wet the sheet and I paint a light background. The key here is to leave some white areas in places. I do that spontaneously and I don't really look at the reference photo. And that's because in those super busy reference photos, usually we don't have to copy everything exactly, especially for a forest painting. So I also add vertical strokes to shape some of those light trees already. And that is going to be a base for our negative painting and from there, it's already a lot easier to paint. And that's why with my lightest color of all here, fallow green light, I'm able to outline the trees wherever I feel like painting them. And since this first color is light, I mostly target the whitish areas in the background. Then to push it a little further, I add crinidrinone magenta to the green background, so that makes it a little more interesting. But that's not the only reason, because since this color clearly overpowers the much softer fallow green light, I'm actually able to keep outlining more trees or finish the ones that weren't popping off the page enough before. And that's how it goes. Even when there's paint on paper, if you use a stronger or a darker or just a more pigmented color than what's already there, then it's going to be easy to create whatever shape you like and all that without a sketch. I like to make sure that the whole painting moves forward at the same time so I can keep the colors in harmony throughout the process and that's why I paint the ground and the main tree now. Moon Glow from Daniel Smith is a color that I really like and here it's going to be great to add definition and texture to the trees. It brings more contrast to the background and it also makes it easy to add a branch here and there or to add a few darker trees. And you can see that I'm using exactly the same color and the same technique to add a second layer to the foreground as well. And as you can see once more, I use negative painting to carve everything from the rocks to the roots and all the details in the tree. And now it's time to add even stronger shadows and color to the foreground to bring the big tree forward because you can see it's kind of melting into the background at this point. And that makes sense since I used the same colors in the same way. So if your paintings look flat, it's likely that you are stopping too soon and not adding enough shadow. And that happens a lot, it's very common. So to make my painting pop more, I'm using sepia. And that's mainly to block in all those shadows even better. 
so the elements in the foreground can detach themselves from the background better. And I take advantage of that to also create texture and emphasize hollow areas. And at that stage in the painting, the paint becomes thicker and thicker for it to work. A trap that we can easily fall into is to end up with a dull painting now because of all these shadows. And that's probably why a lot of beginners don't dare adding too much shadows to their painting. So what I like to do is to glaze a bright color on top and that's going to be mainly my green color. I have a little trick to make things in the foreground pop even more. Sometimes I'll use white gouache like here on the tree. But, and that we don't see often, you can also use it to do the opposite thing and actually take a part of the painting backwards. So if I glaze white gouache on top of the background in some strategic places, you can see now that it looks lighter, farther back, and the main tree is now looking more obvious. And this is the opposite of what I did before, since my gouache is white, it is not a dark color, but you can see clearly that building some realism in a painting is all about contrast. Dark colors bring out the light colors and light colors bring out the dark ones. And if you're just getting started with watercolor, you might find this very interesting, but also very intimidating and confusing. And that's why I recommend you to check out my brand new watercolor landscapes fundamentals workshop just for beginners. I will teach you all the basics and all the secrets that every beginner needs to know to level up fast without all the guesswork that most people go through in the beginning. And the launch offer actually ends tomorrow on March 5th of 2024 at midnight EST. So find the link in the description below to sign up now before the price goes up, or you can also watch this video next to learn more about the workshop. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.